I don't know if there's ever been a time in all of human existence that someone got the hiccups and they said, sweet, I hope this lasts as long as possible. The fact is, hiccups are super annoying and they can even be painful. In today's video, we're gonna discuss the anatomy behind hiccups, how they happen, and even some possible treatments for them. Let's do this. First, let's figure out how breathing works mechanically. So right off the bat, you're gonna notice the heart here in the center, and it's covered with this fibrous connective tissue called the pericardium. And this is gonna go ahead and secrete a lubricating serous fluid that's gonna bathe the heart and kind of reduce the friction as it interacts with the surrounding tissue during the heart beats. On either side, you're gonna see the lungs. And if I pull this right lung out, you're gonna see that there are these, what look almost like cuts, but I didn't make any of these cuts. These are called fissures. And what they do is they create different lobes in the lungs. So you have three lobes in the right lung and then two lobes in the left lung. On the surface of the lungs, as well as the inside of the rib cage, here I can even show this, you can see that kind of glossy sheen look there. This is a tissue called the pleura. And that's just a single layer of epithelial cells. But what it does is it covers the surface of the lungs. It also covers the top portion of this muscle here called the diaphragm. And then it wraps around and connects on that inner lining of the thoracic cavity. So it's one layer that folds back in on itself. So that you kind of have like a bilayer of it, but they don't fully connect. Instead, there's a fluid that separates those two pleural layers. The part of the pleura that connects to the rib cage or that inner thoracic cavity, we call the parietal pleura. And then the pleura that's on the surface of the lungs, we call the visceral pleura. That fluid that's between the two layers of the pleura creates a pressure. And that pressure essentially connects the lungs themselves to that rib cage wall, as well as that upper portion of the diaphragm. The diaphragm muscle is going to be connected to that inner lining of the thoracic cavity. And you can see where we had to cut it away from that anterior part of the wall. But what's gonna happen is it's going to contract because this is made of skeletal muscle. And remember, these lungs are essentially connected to it from that pleura. So as it contracts, that pressure that exists between those two pleural layers is going to be pushing and it's going to kind of go with the diaphragm. So the diaphragm, you can see how it's kind of curved here. It's going to flatten. And as it flattens like that, essentially the lungs are going to occupy that newly created space. I like to think of it similar to a syringe. With a syringe, when you pull it, you're creating a new space and that causes air or fluid to rush in and occupy that space. We call this a negative pressure. And this is how you breathe. When the diaphragm contracts, it creates a negative pressure inside of your lungs, which just forces the air to then rush in. It's all about pressure. Now that we know how breathing works, a hiccup is essentially just when this diaphragm muscle is going to spasm and contract involuntarily. Now there are a ton of different causes for hiccups. I've seen everything from laughing too much, eating too quickly, drinking too quickly, being scared, crying too much. The list goes on and on. Now we've even observed fetuses. Yes, when you're still inside your mom's womb, hiccuping and some think this is practice for breathing once they're born interestingly we're still not 100 percent sure as to what causes hiccups i mean yes eating too quickly can cause them but physiologically we're still not 100 percent sure as to what's going on what we do know is that this nerve right here called the phrenic nerve is going to be sending a signal up towards the brain stem and the brain stem is going to process that signal and then send an outgoing signal back down that same phrenic nerve and also uses another one called the vagus. And that's gonna cause the diaphragm to contract. We call this a reflex arc and you just get stuck in this pattern. But as the diaphragm contracts, remember air is gonna try to rush in, but almost immediately your vocal cords are gonna slam shut. So, as, so then the air just runs into them and you get that typical <laughs> sound. Typically, hiccups just go away on their own. It just takes time and patience, and they usually resolve within a few minutes. But there have been several documented cases of hiccups lasting much longer, with the world record being 69 years. That just sounds awful. 
but like I said, typically they resolve within a few minutes. As for a cure for the hiccups, there are probably thousands of home remedies that range from everything from drinking water. Um, I, I saw someone said you had to hold your breath and jump on one foot. Uh, someone said you needed to smack your forehead while saying peanut butter. I mean, they're all over the place. For me, I've always just held my breath for as long as I can and that typically works, but there is no scientifically known cure for hiccups. But what all of those home remedies have in common is they are jumping in the middle and interrupting that reflex arc. Because if you can stop the incoming signal or the outgoing signal going to or from the diaphragm, well, you can essentially stop hiccups. So that's what all these home remedies are doing. So I guess you can kind of just choose whatever works for you as long as it works. All you need to do is get in the middle of that reflex arc. Now, hopefully that video helped you understand hiccups a little bit. And I promise, I won't tell anyone if you want to hop on one leg, holding your breath and smacking yourself in the forehead to get rid of them. Whatever works for you is fine with me. But I want to mention that we are partnering with Codex Anatomicus and what they do is produce amazing anatomical art like this. They also have pins and stickers. So if you want to go ahead and shop around and get some of this amazing art, you'll find a link down in our description below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.